Morning folks, John here. Now I've had a lot of messages and emails coming through to me saying what has happened to my Alfa Romeo 4C since I put the video out of it going in to be repaired essentially on a flatbed truck. Um, well, I'm pleased to say that the car has been repaired. It's here with me back in the garage. So this is going to be a pretty short video where we're going to get the guy who actually repaired it, Neil from NJS, who runs the company, the Alfa Romeo specialist who actually repaired it. And he's going to tell you exactly what the problem was um, and why it occurred and what he had to do to fix it. Then I'll go through what the actual cost was. I'll cover the bill afterwards. And finally, I'm just going to give you my personal opinion of something that I think caused the problem or was a major contributor to causing this problem with the car, which is something most of us do with our cars and motorbikes all the time. So let's get into all that right now. <music> nine o'clock or thereabouts on Monday morning and we're on the way to go back and collect the Alfa Romeo 4C. Um, they've had it for about a week and we're trying to find out uh, exactly what the problem was. They say they fixed it which is great news um, so we're going to find out what the problem was and of course how much it's cost to actually fix it. There we are then. Now, before we go back in and the dog checks me out, there's a proper Alfa Romeo racing car. I do like that. And he's got another 4C in. Another 4C. That's the first time I've seen one in grey. It's Neil, isn't yes. it, Neil? Right, so with Neil, back in the Alfa Romeo Specialists. Yeah. And you fixed... The 4C, the problem yeah. with the gear unavailable. So yeah. I'm just interested to know, for people who have been following this, what was the problem? Basically, it lost power to the hydraulic pump, which controls the gearbox. Uh, we traced the power back to a voltage regulator, which was faulty. Uh, right. It seems to be a common fault on the 4C spiders, and they can be because they get water ingress into them. Yours didn't have any water ingress, but on this particular occasion, the regulator was still faulty. Right, interesting. And so do you get it more on the spiders? You don't, do you not get it at all on the hard tops? Or? You don't get the water ingress problem with the hard tops, but you do get it on the spiders. Right, okay. Yeah. So, but this this one had occurred, I can no, say it's no never been in the rain. No, no water ingress right, in yours. Right, right, um, okay. The faulty regulator failed, basically. Right, okay, yeah, just, right. Yeah, just a case of getting access to it, which is not easy. Right. Uh, they're a bit buried, but uh, change that and uh, away everything went again. Yeah. Right, brilliant. So hopefully it's going to be all right now, yeah, then with, okay. it, with a bit of luck. And one other question, right, a bit weird. Did you find any bits of dead badger in the car anywhere underneath it? Oh, right, I, I ran over a badger, a right. dead badger, and it made an awful smell. I mean, it absolutely reeked. Yeah. And um, I didn't know whether or not you'd found I brushed it and cleaned the no, other side of it. No, no, we the, had the other trays off yeah. under the engine, but nothing, nothing at all. no hairy things stuck No, the right. Brilliant. Okay, okay. fantastic. No Thank problem. you. So hopefully it's been fixed this time for good um i was talking to neil earlier who runs the garage and he did say to me that the customer he has with the highest mileage alpha 4c is a is a car that's done thirty thousand miles and he said he's had no real problems with it at all all he's ever done is service it so hopefully that's going to be the same now for this one um so we're going to head back get back get it back into the garage and we'll have a look at the final bill i have the final bill here from NJS uh, to tell us exactly how much this all came to and I'm going to read that out to you now. So uh, items, one control unit which was essentially including the VAT £68. So that was actually not too bad at all, uh, in fact extremely cheap. I was surprised at that. So £68, 46 pence to be precise for the control unit where it gets expensive as always is the labor so four and a half hours of labor um, this was to trace the gearbox fault uh, pin out power supply for hydraulic pump 
check the wiring, replace the control unit, that was the 68 pound control unit, calibrate the gearbox and road test to make sure the car is okay. And that element of it came to £348.75 plus the VAT. So the total amount to get this car fixed was precisely £500.65. That was the total paid. Now Neil did say luckily because the control unit was a very cheap element to replace other than of course the labour it could have been a lot worse had it been a hydraulic fault with the actual uh, hydraulic uh, gearbox pump itself so £500 is a lot of money but I, uh, in theory I did get off quite lightly on that. Now I did say um, I have my own personal theory of what was a major contributor to this problem occurring in the first place and this came about after I listened to what Neil had said it did spike something in my mind uh, I might be completely wrong but it is an interesting theory so most of us these days when we wash our cars we use power washers and it's very common now and my theory is that when you're driving a car in the rain well that's fine the car gets a little bit wet and in fact the Alpha is known to ingress water in fact on some models even when it's raining but when you're using a power washer which is what I was doing you're actually driving water into um, parts of the car at such a force that the water goes potentially where water is not supposed to go and it does make a lot of sense to me so it could have been very possible that using a power washer on this car has driven water into parts of the car which caused uh, this electrical failure to occur that's my theory I'm not saying uh, I have no evidence as to whether it's correct but it definitely makes a lot of sense to me because of course as we all know water is extremely damaging to cars and bikes so there you go that's my theory just be careful if you are washing your car I am from now on whenever I wash uh, my car I'm going to be very very careful not to use a power washer anymore okay thanks for watching look out very soon for some more both four-wheeled and two-wheeled action coming up in the future